it's a pleasure and an honor for me uh, to present to you today the Eurocopter X Cubed uh, high speed hybrid helicopter, which is part of the ambitious innovation roadmap we have set for ourselves two years ago for the coming decade. With this exciting and innovative uh, program, Eurocopter is establishing a new uh, generation of helicopters capable of extending the roles of helicopters while maintaining all uh, their advantages, hover, vertical, and uh, takeoff and landing. During my presentation, I will briefly uh, run through the history of Eurocopter's high speed helicopter initiatives. I will then describe the objective of the x -Cube program, uh, how we selected the configuration, and how we created the prototype. <coughs> the flight test program is now well advanced, and I will describe the aims, the first results, and the plans for the remaining months. Within the constraints of commercial secrecy, I will finish by describing some of our plans for the future. Let's start some, some years ago. Achieving high speed by attaching propellers to an helicopter has been around for quite a long time, as you can see uh, on this German Flettner FL 185, which flew in 1936. But due to the technological constraints of the time, it never achieved more than very low speed. More recently, 1975, within the Eurocopter Group, the next major attempt at achieving uh, high speed was the BO-105 HGH, which stands for High Speed Helicopter in German. This flew and achieved 218 knots in descent. This was an early investiga investigation of the effects of using wings to unload the main rotor. Considerable work was done to reduce the drag by using a failed main rotor uh, and removing the skids. Spoilers uh, were required in order to descend normally, but several <coughs> problems of flutter and blade track splits were encountered. Another project was running uh, using a gazelle almost at the same time than the BO-105. This time, the principal aim was to examine the pro uh, possible augmentation of load factor through the addition of wings. This program did show that the addition of wings can cause considerable problems for auto rotation, and so, as this was tested on a single engine aircraft, spoilers had to be fitted uh, to the wings for safety. The Dauphin Grande Vitesse, or high speed Dauphin, was intended to examine the problems which are encoded due to high Mach number and retreating blades stalled at high speed. The conventional helicopter configuration was used with all components tailored to provide maximum performance. Despite the breaking of some records, it was clear from this program that speeds greatly larger than 200 knots would require a different configuration. And this is where we came to the x -cube concept, putting together all the lessons learned from the past. The principal objective of x -cube program is to examine what is required to achieve not a high-speed helicopter, but a cost-effective high-speed helicopter. Indeed, there are some few uh, very specialized military missions which can be performed with more technological uh, but very costly solutions. The x -Cube, however, sets out to provide a solution for a much wider market where costs count, primarily civil market. Normal helicopter-like operations have to be possible, especially in the hover mode. Environmental constraints are becoming
becoming even more important for operators. And so we set out to create a vehicle with low noise, low downwash, and low fuel consumption. Finally, the payload range must be similar or even better than the one of a conventional helicopter if the XQ concept is to become a market success. I have to say, I very much like the equation from Phil. You see, we, address, we try to address all the components of this equation in order to maximize the value we want to create for our customers. Before launching the x uh, project, all possible solutions were examined. Before we finally decided on the x configuration. This is the one that Eurocopter is convinced will provide a long-term market success. Black tape propulsion, as demonstrated in the Ferrari Rotterdam, was rejected largely due to noise. Pusher props at the rear of the fuselage require a very long drive shaft transmitting very high power. Was rejected as well. Protected steerable pusher propeller again requires high power, high power in the long shaft. Therefore, we rejected it as well. The use of turbofans was rejected as being unrealistic, particularly as a conventional tail rotor is required in addition. Tandem rotors are indeed an excellent solution for heavy transport. Boeing is demonstrated it's uh, quite successful. But this does not, however, represent the best solution for cost-effective high speed. Eurocopter has continued over the past 20 years to study and test tilt rotor configuration for many years, but the high complexity, the poor acceptance of the concept because of the high costs in the civil market has meant that we st still only keep it on the, uh, I would say, on the, on the back burner. The contra-rotating main rotor has, we believe, major disadvantages due to high vibration levels from the very rigid rotors and poor performance in hover. The high resistance of the main rotor heads will undoubtedly also require special measures if cruise efficiency is to be ensured. So we now come to the configuration selected for our X-Cube program. By using a conventional helicopter rotor, we get all the advantages of a low disk loading. <laughs> In many of our Eurocopter helicopters, we already use a variable rotor speed to achieve advantages in performance and noise reduction. In the XQ, we go even further. Using a very large range of rotor speeds, again to optimize performance and noise, but also to avoid the potential problems of advancing and retreating blade aerodynamics. An important aim of the test program is to establish the optimum rotor speed range. The flight test program will also enable us to establish the optimum size, the shape of the wings, and possibly movable surfaces. The efficiency of the turboprop is well understood and the XQ benefits from it. By keeping the props close to the main gearbox, we reduce weight and long transmissions. Technology uh, demonstrator <coughs> was constructed mostly using existing components to be fast in validating the concept, to be efficient in terms of NRC, of course. Therefore, we used the engines from the NH90. We use the main rotor from the EC155. The main gearbox is the one of the EC175, which uh, we have modified. We have removed the the shafts are going to the tail rotor, and add, we have added uh, two shafts on each side uh, to the propellers. The fuselage came from one of our Dauphin uh, <laughs> prototypes. The propellers, of course, are not coming from Eurocopter. They, uh, uh, we bought them from a German company, and it provides anti-torque, as well as yaw control. It's interesting to note that these propellers are mostly uh, of wood, made of wood. Of course, the propeller gearbox
boxes have been made uh, specifically for the XQ. They have duplex redundant pitch control. The tail plane is of course new as well, but it's extraordinarily simple and has no moving surfaces. Of course, I should emphasize that the actual configuration of this prototype does not represent the ideal configuration in some respects, such as proximity of the props to the cabin doors. This is due to the use of off the shelf components for this rapidly produced proof of concept demonstrator. We are aiming at uh, demonstrating the validity of the concept. We are not aiming at introducing the product with the XQ. Our methodology 